what's the most important skill that you need to be customer centric? It's a question I get very often. And the answer is very straightforward. It's empathy. It's empathy. Understanding what other people feel. And you know what? We're living in this digital world. And the one thing that machines will never be able to do is be empathic. So that's where our differentiator as humans can be found. But it's very important that if, if you think about customer experience, always think about the human behind the customer. Don't just focus on the customer. Think about the human behind the customer. Try to understand that every human has like a movie of their life in the back of their head. Everyone has dreams. Everyone has fears. We have hopes. We have ambitions. And the better you understand those, the more value you can bring in the life of customers. How can you play a role in the life of your customers? How can you positively change the life of your customers? How can you add value in their life in a way that it goes beyond selling your product? That is what empathy is all about. And it's a skill that is undervalued, I think, in the modern business world. And organizations that really use empathy in a smart and powerful way are the ones that manage to combine the, the power of empathy with the element of timing. Timing and empathy are very related to each other. Let, let me show you an example. A couple of years ago, there was a big hurricane in Florida, in the United States, and Tesla understood that. And at that moment, Tesla said, you know what, we're going to make sure that every single driver, every single client that we have has the longest possible battery power available. Even if they didn't pay for it, we want to give that to them for free. Because there's only one goal at that moment. We have to make sure that all our customers can evacuate the danger zone in a fast and safe way. Because many of the customers of Tesla were concerned. They were like, what if I'm out of energy in the middle of, of my drive out of Florida and the electricity is down, then I'm stuck somewhere. So Tesla understood that and proactively they brought a solution to those customers. That's empathy and timing combined. You understand the fear that people have, you know that it's really important at this moment and you make sure that you bring a solution. Now, and then the question pops up, of course, how can we increase the level of empathy in our organization? Now, I'm going to give you one very concrete strategy that you can use as from tomorrow. There's a big problem in our organizations. And the problem is that when we talk about customers, we tend to dehumanize the customers. We tend to discuss them with market research, and then we say, oh, 75% of our customers are happy, and we celebrate. But we don't really understand what they're telling us. And I want to I use a metaphor to explain. I'm a soccer fan. I'm a big fan of, of the Belgian team Club Brugge. And for the last almost year and a half, there were no fans in the stadiums. And we've seen it all over Europe, hardly any fans in the stadiums. And you feel that. You see that with the soccer players. It's a different kind of energy than when the audience is there. And that's because those professionals, those players, they grew up in a world where they always had real-time customer feedback. Real-time customer feedback. When they did something great, they get applauded. And when they do something terrible, they get booed at. And when they score a goal, it's like an explosion of emotions. And suddenly, from one week to another, silence. They were cut off from their direct customer feedback. And they felt that. And this is, in my opinion, a big problem in our organizations. Ask yourself, what is the percentage of your organization, the percentage of employees that actually get direct feedback from customers? Usually it's the front-end staff, it's the salespeople, it's the service people, but many of your colleagues are not directly exposed to the oohs and the ahs of your customers. And when you talk about customers, it's in an abstract kind of way. And if you do that too long, you start to dehumanize them. So my invitation, my tip of the day to boost the, energy, the empathy levels in your organization is to work with NS1. Make sure that as many of your colleagues as possible get direct customer feedback. Even if it's only one customer, it will make a difference. Maybe, you, maybe you've been in this, uh, in this situation huh, where, where you've been trying really hard to convince the board about something that you wanted to install and they didn't listen to you, it wasn't a priority, the budget wasn't there, all those kind of excuses. Then suddenly, 
the CEO has like a barbecue, a neighborhood barbecue, and one of the neighbors comes to the CEO and is like, hey, I dealt with your company and this and this, it was a true disaster. Well, because of that one conversation, the CEO comes back and tells you that idea that you shared six months ago and that I dropped off the table, let's talk about that. I think this is a good moment to actually start working on that. That is the power of NS1. And NS1, in a scaled way, where you make sure that as many people as possible from your organization get as many direct feedback, the oohs and the ahs directly from the customer, the higher your level of empathy will become. And remember how I started this presentation. What is the critical skill you need to be really customer-centric? It's empathy. So the challenge is to boost the level of empathy in your organization. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, share it with everyone who can use a boost in empathy in their organization. You can also follow me on Instagram. I share a lot of content there. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.